you've seen this a little bit, but now we get into the logistics and, forgive me, the functionality of how a function is going to be used to return a value. So why would you even want to do this? Remember, when we're departmentalizing, we want to be able to send some information somewhere, they do all the work, and they give us back an answer. When you get older, trust me, you appreciate that when somebody else does the work. That's exactly what a function's meant to do that's supposed to return a value. So what you're going to see is that if we have an equal sign and then our function call, so again, you notice it's a function call because we have parentheses behind it. Now, by the way, it can be an empty set of parentheses, can be parentheses that have other parameters passing into it. For right now, the logistics doesn't matter if we're worried about what's inside parentheses or not. I'm just worried about the overall logistics of how this is going to work. As you may recall, whenever we see the equal sign, the right-hand side is going to be done first. So equal sign, okay, we're going to go to jump code. And again, we know it's a function because of parentheses. So we're physically going to go to the zip code function, and we're going to complete it just like we do with our call stack -ish stuff. We're going to complete it from top to bottom. Here in this function, we have int zip equals 21118. And then we return, and that's the key word, we return zip. If we have a function that returns literally any type of value, it has to have the word return. Your compiler will not let you compile this function if you don't have a return of something. It's telling you that it's returning an integer. So back to the overall logistics. Zip code's expecting the answer. It is going to be returning a literal value in this case of 2118. So zip code physically becomes the value of 21118. So now that code looks a little bit more, well, hey, it looks like it makes sense, right? We have int get zip equals 21118. Yeah, that's how it ends up working out. 2118 will then get dropped into get zip. And that's how things run out with returning a value. Now, by the way, we can return any data type that we want, float, double, strings, other objects. You know, we can be kind of crazy with this. Let's just put it that way. So you're going to start seeing some functions that are going to return some different things other than integers because, hey, that's them doing the work and then presenting back to the program or you, the programmer, some material that you're going to then need to use later on to assign to a value store or whatever. That's what using a function to return a value can do for you in helping you organize and compartmentalize your algorithms. There's a dead giveaway code-wise if you know a function is returning a value or not. If you have the call by itself and there's literally no equal sign in front of it, most likely that function is returning nothing. Now, I say most likely because frankly, it could also be an oops, that they forgot to. But most of the time it's going to be that function returns nothing. Did the function do something? Yes. Did it do some work? Yes. Did it physically jump to the call or whatever the name of the function is? Yes, it did it from top to bottom and then came back. But it just didn't return a value to your program. But it still did some work. But again, you can tell if it's going to return a value usually by an equal sign that is just in front of the function call. And remember, the right-hand side of the equal sign is going to be done first, and then we'll store the value onto the left-hand side. So that's the easy way of telling if a function's doing what. Once you do the exercise we have below here, um, I don't think there's anything crazy about it. So there, there, there is a curveball that I'm throwing in one of these questions, but most of them should be pretty simple. There is one curveball. There is one curveball. Other than that, let's go over that here in a moment. And uh, yeah, we'll do that. Get to work.
All right, number one, what type of data is this function has value returning? To be precise, it really is returning a bool. I know a lot of you probably said true or false, and that's true too. But to be honest with you, bool is really the correct answer because that's what's literally listed as the functions. Number two, are there any variables declared inside the method has value? And that's why I said be careful because there's a curveball. Now, by the way, a lot of you, which understandably so, you're going to look at the squiggly braces, and you're looking between, well, really, there's, there's nothing exactly being set. That's a comparison, so no. No, there's no variables that are being declared inside the function. Just for your heads up. String x actually is a variable that is being declared inside of that function. So I can use, notice I'm able to use x within that particular function. And there is going to be a value of x that is transferred literally, well, it's loopholy in this case, literally going to be transferred into string, and then we're going to use that for the rest of the program. Well, sorry, the rest of that function. Let me, let me apologize for that, okay? So number two was the curveball in this one. If you didn't get it, not a big deal. The rest of them you better get. Number three, what possible values could be returned from has value? And that is going to be yes, that is going to be true and false. Number four, how many possible values can has value return? That's going to be two. And by the way, that's only because this is a Boolean. Boolean only has two values that we can return. If this function was a float or an integer, the, the amount of variables that we could use, or sorry, the values that could be returned is almost infinite. So notice that's why I'm doing that with the Boolean. How many values will be or will has value return is one. Now, by the way, that might be different than some other programming languages that you've dealt with before. Like in Python, you can return multiple values in one line. Here in C++, it's just one, and that's it. So just a heads up on that. And then in reality, what type of function is has value? That is going to be a predicate function.